Summer's almost here. In fact, depending on when you're watching this video, summer could already be here. And every summer, I like to drop a list of my top 10 favorite sneakers that are available that upcoming summer. And honestly, this year's list is kind of more important than it's been in a while because this is the first summer in like two years we've been able to go outside and hang out with friends and see people again. What's up, everybody? I'm Seth Fowler, and this is my top 10 list for the best sneakers for summer 2021. So as with most of my list videos, I've made sure to leave links to all of the sneakers that we're going to talk about in today's video in the description description below, as well as some shoes that I just think are great deals and are on sale. So if you guys would like to check out any of those shoes, they'll be down below. As you already know, today's list is about the top 10 best sneakers for summer 2021. And because of that, I made sure to add only sneakers that go good with shorts and sneakers that are comfortable to wear around all day. Not only that, but I made sure to only add sneakers on this list that are available right now and available at pretty much every retailer. Some sizes might be sold out, some colorways might be sold out, but you should be able to find at least one colorway in your size of any of these pairs of sneakers. Also, I feel like it's important to mention that the order of this list is all just based on my own personal opinion. No shoe on this list is better than any other shoe, and it really just depends on which shoes you like the best. Everyone's feet are different, everyone's style preferences are different, so it doesn't matter which shoe you like on the list, or maybe even if you don't like any of them, that's totally fine. I've made sure to link as many as I can in the description below. But with all that being said, let's jump right into the list. At number 10 is the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run. So I actually put the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run on my list of the top 10 most comfortable sneakers of 2021. And in fact, if you didn't see that list, it actually made the number one spot. And the reason for that is because this shoe is stupid comfortable. It almost doesn't make sense how comfortable this sneaker is. For years, I've been a huge Ultra Boost fanboy because for the last couple years, the Ultra Boost has been the most comfortable sneaker. And to be fair, I still love the Ultra Boost. I still think it's a great looking sneaker. But at the end of the day, if you're going for pure cushy comfort, this is the shoe to go with. The Nike Zoom X Invincible Run, as the name would suggest, features a full length Zoom X midsole. And Zoom X, if you're not familiar with it, is one of the most, if not the most, comfortable foams to use on a midsole. It's just so incredibly soft underneath your foot, and it still has some nice response to it, like you still sort of bounce into the next step. It just feels great underfoot. And that's why this shoe is such a great recovery sneaker for runners, because it's one of those shoes that's just going to be so easy on your joints. And then when you pair that midsole with a fly knit upper, the whole thing is just amazing on foot. It's super breathable, it's super stretchy, it just feels great all the way around. Now, although I love the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run, and think it's the most comfortable shoe I've ever worn, there are some downsides. And those two downsides, at least that I've found, are the price, which is $180, which makes it one of the most expensive shoes, if not the most expensive shoe on the list, and also the aesthetics. I kind of think it's an ugly sneaker. In the black and white colorway, it's not too bad, but a lot of the colorways that they've dropped for this shoe have just kind of been, eh. But I guess every shoe has to have its flaws. No shoe is perfect, and the flaw of this one is definitely the price and the style. Although comfort is incredible on this shoe. And number nine is the New Balance 327. Sort of going the other direction from a super highly engineered, very comfortable sneaker to a much more minimal and more style-focused sneaker, the New Balance 327 is one of the cheapest shoes on today's list. Coming in at just 90 bucks, the New Balance 327 is an extremely stylish, everyday sneaker that goes with pretty much anything. As you know, I'm kind of a big New Balance stand at the moment. I really love everything that they're putting out, and the New Balance 327, although it's a newer silhouette, is inspired by retro sneakers, and I think it's the perfect sort of mix of retro and futuristic style. The reason I put the New Balance 327 on this list in particular is because it's an incredibly lightweight and very breathable low-top sneaker. It's one of those shoes that you can throw on with socks, which I definitely recommend, or without socks, which I don't recommend as much, and you can wear it with pretty much any kind of pant length. Although there's not a huge selection to choose from when it comes to colorways, because a lot of colorways just sell out immediately, it's still one of those shoes that does offer enough variety so you can find pretty much anything that you're looking for. And again, if you're trying to grab a pair of these, I've left links to these and every other sneaker on the list in the description below. At number eight, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Mid. I'm pretty sure that the Air Jordan 1 Mid has been on this list a couple different times. In fact, it's probably been at the number one spot a few different times as well. And the reason for that is that the Air Jordan 1 in the low top, mid top, and high top version are some of my favorite sneakers ever made. Now, if you're a sneakerhead, you might be saying to yourself, why did you put the Air Jordan 1 mid on the list and not the low? And the reason for that is because the low is just harder to find at the moment. The mid is pretty widely available. You can walk into a lot of different sneaker stores and there will be pairs available. And yes, I totally get that the low top version might be a better shoe for summer overall, but you are going to be wearing long pants every so often and the mid is perfect for that. And it could even work with some pairs of shorts, maybe. Maybe it's just me. I just like to wear low tops when I wear shorts. You can wear high tops, but I just kind of prefer lows. That said, the Air Jordan 1 
Mid is an incredibly versatile shoe, and it's probably the most available Air Jordan 1. It comes in a ton of different colorways, a lot of which are actually very popular and sometimes even sell out. And although there are some sneakerhead snobs out there, I'm not gonna lie, I've been that guy before that don't love the Air Jordan 1 Mid because it's not exactly the high and it's not really the same thing, it's still a good sneaker overall, and if you're trying to grab a pair of Air Jordan 1s, this is a great shoe to start with. And honestly, one of the best parts about the Air Jordan 1 Mid is its price point. It's actually only $115. To be fair, that's more expensive than it was last year when it was $110, but it's still significantly cheaper than the high top version, which now retails for $170. So you're getting a shoe that looks very similar to the hyped up version, but at a much cheaper price, and you can actually find pairs. At number seven is the Vans Old School. So to be fair, like the Air Jordan 1 Mid, where I recommended really any pair of Air Jordan 1s, I'm kind of doing the same thing with the Vans Old School and recommending pretty much any pair of low top Vans. The great thing about Vans is how inexpensive they are, but how much you get for the money. First of all, Vans are some of the most classic and wearable shoes available on the market. You see pretty much everyone wearing a pair of Vans at some point. They're just like the perfect everyday shoe. They might not be the most comfortable sneaker in the world, but they look great and they're super easy to wear. Coming in at just 60 bucks, you could buy two or even three pairs of old schools for the same price that you would buy a pair of Nike Zoom X Invincible runs. And not only that, in my opinion, the Vans old schools look significantly better than the Invincible runs. Now, of course, because these shoes are so inexpensive, there are some trade-offs, like the materials used on the upper are just kind of canvas, and that's pretty much all you get, so it's not a high-end material, but it gets the job done. It's also not the most comfortable upper, but it does have some padding around the ankle, which can help. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for a clean, everyday basic, the Vans Old School, or the Vans Authentic, or even slip-ons are a great choice. At number six is the Adidas Ultra Boost DNA 6.0. The Ultra Boost DNA is sort of the standard lifestyle version of the Ultra Boost versus the more performance version called the Ultra Boost 21. And the reason that I put the DNA 6.0 on the list instead of the standard version is because it just looks significantly better in my opinion. And the added comfort that you get from the 21 is not really worth it because that shoe is kind of busted. I don't know, it's not a bad looking shoe, it's just when you see the DNA, you're like, that shoe looks so much better. All that said, the Ultra Boost DNA 6.0 is still an incredibly comfortable sneaker. It features a full length boost midsole, which feels absolutely insane underfoot. You've also got a prime blue upper, which is essentially prime knit, but it uses recycled materials, which I also think is pretty cool. And if you've never tried prime knit or boost or any combination of the two, you're in for a treat because this shoe is like, the second most comfortable shoe I've ever worn. After the, well third, after the 21s and the Invincible Runs, and I guess there are some other shoes up there too, but it's definitely near the top of the list. Also style-wise, I think the Ultra Boost DNA 6.0 is a great looking sneaker. I don't like it as much as the DNA 5.0 or some of the other DNA sneakers because they changed up the ankle area just a little bit, and I feel like it's not as clean as it used to be, but it's still a good looking sneaker and it's still a shoe that I strongly recommend. And like I mentioned before, the Ultra Boost does use a decent amount of recycled materials, specifically Parlay Ocean Plastics in the upper of the sneaker, so if you're into sustainability, this is a really great shoe to go with. Unfortunately, the price point of the Ultra Boost DNA 6.0 is not the most affordable at 180 bucks. However, if you're looking for an older version of the shoe, or maybe a colorway that's not as clean as this all-white colorway, you still can find pairs on sale at Foot Locker, Finish Line, places like that. I'll make sure to leave links to both the new version and the versions on sale in the description below. At number five is the Nike Blazer Mid 77. This is another retro-inspired pair of sneakers, or I guess actually retro in this case. The theme of this video just seems to be like retro or retro inspired sneakers. I guess that's just sneakers in 2021. Regardless, this is a very clean and simple looking pair of sneakers. The Blazer Mid is just one of those ultra wearable pairs of sneakers, and that's probably why it's been collaborated on so many different times, most notably the off-white Nike Blazers. And it's just one of those unassuming pairs of sneakers that really only sneaker connoisseurs or sneaker fans notice that you're wearing. And although the Nike Blazer has been having sort of a renaissance in recent years, it's still one of those sneakers that has never really fallen out of popularity. It's been kind of a staple for a lot of people. Some of my favorite things about the Nike Blazer Mids are the full leather upper accented by suede details, the exposed foam around the edges of the tongue which call back to retro sneakers, and also just the overall simple clean aesthetic. While the Blazer Mid might not come in every colorway, the colorways that have dropped have all been incredible. In fact, I think it's pretty hard to find a bad looking pair of Nike Blazer Mids. And at just 100 bucks, you really can't go wrong with this sneaker. It's definitely a sneaker that's worth picking up. At number four is the Puma RS Dreamer. So if you didn't know, the Puma RS Dreamer is actually J. Cole's signature sneaker. And what's even more interesting
interesting is that the Puma RS Dreamer is actually a performance basketball sneaker, and the shoe came out before J. Cole played basketball professionally, albeit only really for a couple games. While J. Cole's basketball skills might not be as great as his actual musical ability, the sneaker itself is a pretty solid sneaker both on and off the court. The Puma RS Dreamer features a pro foam midsole, which feels pretty decent underfoot, but does give you a lot of court feel. That said, it does, however, provide some decent impact protection. But what I like about this shoe personally is the aesthetic. I think it's an excellent looking basketball sneaker and just an excellent looking everyday shoe. The paneling on the upper of the shoe is very modern and very interesting looking and the midsole also has some pretty nice styling as well. A kind of cool hidden detail is that the traction pattern on the outsole of the shoe is actually modeled after a leaf and you wouldn't notice it unless you turn the shoe over and saw it. It's a really cool look. Coming in at just 125 bucks, it's a pretty reasonably priced sneaker and the fact that it's tied to J. Cole, if you're a fan of J. Cole, is definitely a selling point. At number three is the Nike Air Force One Low. The AF1 Lows are regulars on this list. In fact, they've been on pretty much every top 10 sneakers of summer list that I've ever done. And there's a reason for that. This is one of the most classic and most popular sneakers of all time. Air Forces have been worn by pretty much everyone, whether you're into sneakers or not into sneakers. They've been made famous by celebrities and also worn by your neighbor next door, and there's probably a pair in your closet somewhere. And what makes these shoes so appealing besides just the clean aesthetic and the history is the price point. At just 90 bucks, they're a very well-priced sneaker. And what's crazy is that over the last couple months, these shoes have started selling out for no real reason. Resellers have started buying up pairs and reselling them for more, which doesn't really make sense to me because this is not like a limited shoe. It's a general release, which means every store should have a bunch of pairs. But for whatever reason, these shoes are starting to gain some resell, which is kind of disappointing because it's the kind of shoe that you could always expect to see in a sneaker store, and now it's actually harder to find. But of all the classic shoes on this list that have been available since the 80s and even 70s in some cases, I guess it makes sense that the Air Force Ones are the ones that are starting to resell because they've been gaining a lot of hype due to recent collaborations, and also they've got some of the richest history of any shoe on this list. In my opinion, the Air Force One is really one of those sneakers that you kind of need to have a pair of, whether it's the standard triple white version or maybe a collaboration version or maybe a Nike by you version. It doesn't really matter what pair you have, but having a pair of Air Force Ones as a sneakerhead is almost necessary. And surprisingly, even though the AF1 lows have been around for decades and the tech inside the shoe hasn't really changed, it's still one of the most comfortable sneakers on the list. Next up at number two is the Nike Waffle One. So like I was saying earlier on in the video, a lot of the sneakers on this list are either retro sneakers or heavily inspired by retro sneakers. And the Nike Waffle One is exactly that. It's very heavily inspired by classic waffle running sneakers. The Nike Waffle outsole is one of the most iconic outsoles of all time. So it makes sense that Nike is really drawing inspiration from that outsole and that first version of the shoe and pulling it into a much more modern take on that sneaker. There's actually a couple colorways of this sneaker that remind me a lot of certain Sakai collaborations, specifically the Sakai LD Waffle in gray and white. This shoe looks a lot like that, but at a much cheaper price point. The Nike Waffle 1 comes in at just 100 bucks, but because of its lower price point, it doesn't have some of the fancier tech that some of the more expensive sneakers on the list have. The Nike Waffle 1 not only looks like some of Nike's classic running sneakers, but it's also built like some of them as well. Apparently the midsole of the shoe is double stacked and creates a sort of wedge shape like some of the original running sneakers did, which some people like, some people don't. I don't personally love the way it feels, but it's not enough for me not to want to wear the shoe. And of course, as you probably could have guessed from the name of the sneaker, the Nike Waffle One features a rubber waffle outsole. But what really makes this sneaker stand out to me and the reason it's so high on this list is because I feel like it's the perfect mix of retro and modern, and it's just a really excellent looking sneaker. Also, it's a great shoe for summer. It's a lightweight sneaker that features an incredibly breathable transparent mesh upper, which means your feet are never gonna overheat no matter how hot it is outside. And even though there's not a huge amount of colorways that have released for this sneaker so far, there's a lot more colorways coming and Nike also gives you the option to customize this sneaker on the Nike by You segment of their website. The Nike Waffle One is a great looking sneaker at a good price point. And in my opinion, it's really flying under the radar. So if I were you, I'd grab this shoe before the hype really starts to pick up on the silhouette. Finally, coming in at number one is the Adidas Forum 84 Low. So the Adidas Forum has been around for a while. In fact, as the name would suggest, this shoe's been out since 1984. But it hasn't been until recently that Adidas has really started to bring this sneaker back, and the Forum is becoming one of the most popular silhouettes of 2021. And just like with the Nike Waffle One, I feel like the Adidas Forum Low is still flying under the radar a little bit, but by the end of the year, after a couple more collaborations have come out, this shoe will be one of the most popular sneakers of the year. And just like with the Nike Waffle One, I still feel like the Adidas Forum Low is flying a little bit under the radar, but once we get a couple more collaborations, everyone's gonna know about this shoe and want to grab a pair. What I love so much about the retro styling of the Adidas Forum Low is the 
fact that this shoe is a retro basketball sneaker that still uses classic materials like leathers and suede. If you look at some of the newer basketball sneakers over the last decade or two, we've really moved away from things like leathers and suede, which is really sad to see. The Adidas Forum came out around the time when basketball sneakers were getting really exciting. When basketball players were moving away from Converse's and getting into things like the Adidas Forums, like the Air Jordan 1s, like the Nike Dunks, it was just such a great time for sneaker design. And the craziest part is that these sneakers still hold up today. In fact, a lot of the shoes were on the list today. And the reason I put the Forum low at the top of the list is because I feel like this shoe is finally hitting its stride in the new decade. We're finally getting great colorways, great collaborations. It's the kind of shoe that you can wear with everything. It features recycled materials in addition to leathers and suede and other really nice premium materials. And some of these colorways are straight fire. In fact, I've got one of my favorite colorways on this shoe behind me. Yes, it's not the Forum Low, it's the Forum Mid, but it's still a super clean look. And you can buy a Forum Low in a similar colorway to that if you like that blue and white look. The Adidas Forum Low is a great looking sneaker. It uses great materials. It costs only a hundred bucks, which makes it one of the cheaper shoes on today's list. And it's one of those sleeper hits. I think a lot of people are gonna be rocking this sneaker by the end of the year. Seriously, you cannot go wrong with a pair of Adidas Forum 84 Lows, and they're a great shoe for summer. But with that, we pretty much wrap up the entire list for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on the sneakers on this list, so make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, if you wanna grab any of the sneakers on this list, or maybe just check out some dope sneakers on sale, I've also made sure to link those in the description below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.